All right, hello everybody. Um, this is Robin Richardson of Spooky Action AI. Um, like I said, everything from the past is deleted. I'm moving forward uh, in a new way, but I'm going to cover a lot of the same content. And the first thing, so okay, so for this episode, I want to talk about synchronicity because that is one of the guiding principles and sort of play components of Spooky Action AI, and it is what I believe is the one of the fundamentals of reality, one of the most important principles to understand in reality. And yet it's such a sticky, interesting area. And I have this visualization right, right now in my head of like the matrix of the world, sticky. And one of the stickiest parts of it is the uh, diagnosis of um, psychosis, which states that if you find meaning and random things, you are psychotic. You are attributing meaning where it is not. Things are meaningless. Things have cause and effect, but they don't have underlying meaning or patterning or structure. And I completely disagree. I completely disagree. So in an interesting way, if you believe, if you follow and understand and experience extensive synchronicity, you are by clinical definition a psychotic. It's very interesting. And to me, I see that as a, a self-correcting mechanism of the matrix, just as your psychosis can be a manifestation of a self-correcting mechanism of your own problematical psyche. So there's so much to get in. And I like to say, I always hold all things at once. So we can talk about psychosis, we can talk about enlightenment, we can talk about physics, we can talk about quantum physics, and we can say all of these things are true at once. The experience was both in my head and completely real. So let me tell you about synchronicity. <laughs> so I, let, let me start by saying, okay, I'll define it quickly. And then I'll say how I came to understand it, which is how I came to understand all things. So synchronicity was coined as a term by Carl Jung, I'm pretty sure. Um, it's like, you know, what you see on the internet, who knows how valid everything is, but, and, and he uses it, he says that it is when, when two things occur pretty close together in a, uh, oh, what is the other word? A coincidence that is meaningful. It is too on the nose not to be somewhat meaningful. Uh, and so many people have studied synchronicity in so many different ways. I, so I'll give you an example. Jung's famous, most famous synchronicity example, because he was just, it's so interesting because I just went through my big psychosis at 30, 38 to 39, which is exactly when Carl Jung went through his big psychosis and wrote the red book, 38, 39. And it was identical, an identical structure. I went crazy in exactly the same way he did by definition, you know, by clinical definition. I think there's a lot more to it than just to dismiss it as crazy. This is legitimate psychic content that is important. But anyways, so Carl Jung, a big advocate of meaning and synchronicity and the effect of consciousness on reality and the fact that reality is in fact all consciousness, was sitting with an analysand, which is uh, one of his patients. And she was saying, you know, I just don't buy this stuff. I just don't buy that there's underlying meaning to anything. I don't get it. I don't buy it. I don't see it. And in the same sitting, she was telling him about a dream she had about a, I want to say cherub. Yes. Is it cherub? Scarab. <laughs> a scarab beetle. <laughs> a scarab beetle. So she tells the dream about the scarab beetle. And then she tells him how meaning is not a real thing. And as she's going on, in the middle of their session, unlike the third story, suddenly something bangs into the window. It is a scarab beetle that bangs into the window in the moment the woman is saying, oh, I don't believe in any of this stuff. And, and of course, and now this will just show you because, and we'll go a layer deeper with this, but of course, Young opens the window, picks up the cherub beetle and goes, here's your, no, scarab, scarab beetle, pardon me, so dyslexic, and says, here is your scarab beetle. beetle. <laughs> what do you think of meaningful coincidence now? And she says, nothing. I don't think anything of it. You see, and, and that takes us to another layer of this. If you, if you believe that everything is meaningless, you will never find meaning. And you will never notice or make note of or care about synchronicity. And it will not prove itself to you. Nothing will prove itself to you. 
if you believe, if you enjoy synchronicity and you find meaning in life, life will increasingly prove its meaning. This, then we can take this a step further into quantum physics and talk about the observed particle, the observed particle collapsing itself from a wave function into a solid based on its observation. So you're, you're the observer observing reality into either meaningful magic or dull randomness. And I swear, and this is something that I think about with, with science, and sci- because the scientists who are structurally fixed in a very, in a very, it's like they're all Newtonian and, you know, they've all got a very fixed idea of reality. And they approach everything with a kind of skepticism that create, that, that reflects in their results a lot of the time. So keeping thing, these things in mind, that you can't separate the outcome from the observer ever, ever. So if you are listening to me and thinking hocus pocus bullshit, then you're, you're right. <laughs> you're absolutely right. And if you're listening to me thinking, oh, maybe she's onto something and there's magic in the world and I've experienced it too. And I want to go through the, lo- the looking glass and down the rabbit hole and experience this. Then you will. I promise you, you will. And that's the interesting thing about it. And that's why to the mm, non-magic thinker, the magic thinker is a psychotic. And to the magic thinker, the, the non-magic thinker is a psychotic. <laughs> but we're, we're all just right because we're all creating our realities. So you're, you're always going to be right about your own reality and it's always going to prove itself to you. You can say, I've seen every proof in the world that there is no God. And you're right, there is no God. But if you say, I've seen every proof in the world that there is a God, you will be right. Everyone will always get the proof that they, that they believe, always. So that, that's, that's massively philosophical and, and that's just coming out of my mind and my perception. So take it with a grain of salt. If you disagree, cool. Again, you're right. <laughs> you're right. But let me go back to my experience with synchronicity and why it's so been such a big deal for me and why it's a big part of the application. So to me, as all things, it never started with the theoretical. I did not discover synchronicity because of Carl Jung. I discovered synchronicity because synchronicity. <laughs> Um, especially a little bit when I was a kid, like I'll give you examples and the examples is where it really comes to life. I was the kind of kid that would sit there and watching a movie with my dad and then be like, what are the fire procedures of this building? What happens when the fire alarm goes off? Which stairs do we go down? Because I needed to know that instant because the fire alarm, oh, there it goes. Ding, 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 ding. So I was always like a step ahead of reality. I was always syncing up with it. And anything, and I've learned, I've seen this through my life, anything that I have expected to happen has happened. Anything that I have anticipated or desired has come to fruition in the most magical and interesting ways. So it's always been a part of my life. I'm going to give you a few other examples. I have one that is so my favorite. It's so good. When I was a teenager, like 16, I stopped trying to fit in for this glorious like three years I was just the coolest kid in the world where I was like, oh, I don't need friends to go to the movie. Like, I can just go to a movie. I can just go downtown and go to a jazz club alone. Like, are you kidding me? That's, that's awesome. So I started just listening to music. I would go take the bus into Toronto and like go to Suspect Video and rent fringe movies, like really weird shit, and then bring it back to the suburbs. It was totally Ghost World, you know, you know that comic book? And, um, and anyway, so it's like a long commute. So I get on the bus, I take it all the way to the subway, take the subway into the city. I'm doing this after school. So it's like a drudgery. And this is the days before cell phones. So I would bring my book and my Walkman, (laughs) which if you're young, that's what we put CDs in, CDs to listen to music. And on this particular day, I forgot my book and I was not going to be able to do an hour commute each way without my book. So I'm sitting there like, oh shit, I have to get off at the next stop, go all the way back home. And the bus stop was not right outside my house and get my book and come back. So I sit there and I wait for the next stop and the bus stops at the next stop. And as I'm going to get up, I see this boy from my school get on the bus. He walks towards me. I love this story. He walks towards me and he's holding a book and he comes right up to me and he's like, oh, Robin. He's like, this is the kind of book I think you would like. Do you want it? Like now? (laughs) 
and he drops it in my lap and the book this is the crate there's a two-fold extra so it's one thing to want and this is a perfect example of syn- synchronicity it's one thing to it's like I need a book and then a book is dropped in your lap that's already amazing moreover it's threefold hitter okay it's it's just it's a home run the book that he gave me was the exact book that I was reading it was on the kitchen table furthermore it was hitchhiker's guide to the galaxy which is the most synchronicity fun magical book there is and they talk about you know i think i think it's in hitchhiker's guide i don't know i don't remember it that well but i think they talk about like the unprobability thing where you they enter this zone where it's like the most unprobable thing is the thing that will most likely occur in this like backwards area of reality so i feel like i made the it was just i don't know it was perfect it was perfect so and then that whole summer it was like again exactly how you would describe psychosis only the only thing that was happening was that i was alone i was happy i was aligned i was doing things that i loved and i was being random um and though that's the key and and so things would happen like i would be one oh i remember once um I was walking barefoot. I was such a little hippie. I was watching walking barefoot to Kensington Market, <laughs> the hippiest. And I stepped in some dog shit. And I looked back at it, and it was like, it was like um, oil paint. It was so beautiful. And then I like whatever walked on the grass, wiped it off, and then I walked into Courage, my love, the store. And the woman behind the counter was like, "Wow." She's like, "If you can see beauty in a piece of shit, you're a really special person." You know, she just said that to me. She's like. You know, it was that level of, of like direct. And the interesting thing is, these are stories from my past. If I told you stories from 2020 on, they're like a hundred times more, a hundred times more specific than this. I have been living in a state of pure synchronicity, pure alignment of everything. And it's like the veil's gone and I'm in a dream and my thoughts manifest instantly. And everyone walks by me, finishes my sentences in my head. You know, it's completely harmonized. Um, But to me, and again, depending on who's listening, you can call this psychosis, but psychosis is just just the word they give to this phenomenon. It's It's just a label. And unfortunately, more often than not, people don't know how to deal with it. And unfortunately, there are also negative forces in the psyche and in the world that take advantage of this state so most people when they're in this state end up on medication because it seems scary you know the psychiatrist says but you don't want to be in this state do you so i'm going to medicate you well i did it served me very well um until it didn't but even when it didn't it did you know getting dragged to hell was also beneficial and i'll talk about that so Here are the contributing factors to synchronicity, and here is my theory about synchronicity, which you can read up on from a whole bunch of different theories that I'll link to eventually, and maybe in the comments. Um, Let's say, okay, because here, because I've seen it come and go in my life. It's like, it, it was, when I was a teenager, it was on fire because I was alone, and I wasn't on a structure, um, and I didn't have friends, so I was able to follow impulses, that's really, really, really important. If you're, if you wake up at 6am, eat your breakfast and go to work, you're not going to be able to, it's like, uh, there's a higher dimensional, I'm going to get really esoteric here, but just follow me. I'm just, it's, it's, I'm trying to translate for the people who like know this and the people who are like skeptical, you know? I call it the architects of reality. There are architects of reality who pick up on, it's like, I don't want to make, I don't want you to think that I'm making up like the idea of these beings, but there's a movement to the fabric of reality that when you're receptive will move you towards those things that are a reflection of your own consciousness in a delightful way. And if you're not in touch with your own consciousness, and if you're not receptive to being able to be moved, you're not going to run into those things. So you're not going to experience synchronicity if you're not in a state of uh, freedom. Because I'll give you an example here. Um, 
when I was living out in the middle of nowhere, there was a strawberry patch, uh, a strawberry farm. And I wanted to go pick strawberries. And when I got there, I had missed it. They just shut down for the day. And I thought, oh, what a bummer. I really wanted strawberries. And I couldn't just go to the store. I was in the middle of nowhere with no car. Don't ask. I'll tell you later. And so I'm walking home and I'm doing what I always do, which is following random impulses. Instead of taking the straight path home, I'm wandering down here. I'm wandering over there. I'm wandering over there. I let myself be guided by random impulses, which I cannot tell you how important that is. And that's going to be in the app in a really big way. Randomization. For self-protection, as much as for alignment with the goodies that the universe has for you, let's say it that way. So I wander down this road and this truck pulls up right next to me and goes, hey, I know you. I'm like, oh, really? He's like, yeah, I saw you riding your bike all the way out to Wolfville yesterday. That was badass. You, I saw you, I saw you like three hours apart riding that bike. (laughs) He's like, do you want some strawberries? And he gave me, what is it, a quart of strawberries. Fresh strawberries, fresh picked from the farm that I wanted to go to. So it's, it's like, um, it's kind of like you put, it's like you, you have this resonance and we talk about resonance in the app. You have the resonance of strawberries. And this is a really important moment. I have the resonance of wanting strawberries, but when I didn't get the strawberries, because I'm practiced in this, I'm practiced at making synchronicity. I didn't be all disappointed and like sulk home and just put myself in the reality where I didn't have strawberries. I wasn't trying to make the strawberries happen, but I was moving on still happy. I was still happy. Like detachment is key. I was still happy. I was still randomizing. And I was able to rendezvous with exactly what I was a match to and what I wanted, which was strawberries in the most magical, delightful way. Because the fabric of reality is formed by my feelings and my thoughts. It is. And the energy I'm putting out, which is feeling. But the resonance. It's resonating. Strawberry, strawberry, strawberry. And then the strawberry comes. (laughs) Happy, happy, happy. And then the thing that corresponds to happy comes. You will... Now, the interesting thing about this is once you understand this, you can put it into practice and you can look through your entire life. And this is what I did when it, because to me until 2020, I was somebody who said, I always experienced this stuff. Well, not, and and, and not in my twenties, I went offline. I drank and I numbed myself and I did not experience these things at all. So if people say there's no such thing as synchronicity, it's because they're just drunk (laughs) or numb or not paying attention. But I didn't know why. And then in 2020, I had the most abrupt awakening and suddenly came into contact with all of these higher dimensional teachers who made it all really clear. Um, So to me, the structure of reality from this vantage point, like from the earth matrix is very clear. I understand the laws of it pretty well and I've put them to test. So it was from having the experiences throughout my life, like I said, and after 2020, it just got amplified times a billion because then I actually understood it and then I was able to harness it and then it just became way more. Um, And then even looking at my life and I was able to do a kind of scientific analysis of it by saying, okay, if I look at my life, is there any example of me, of, of me having an experience that wasn't in one way or another, the direct result of the way I was thinking and feeling at the time? zero, zero. Even it's so interesting. I look, this, this was really cool. I looked at the mall. I grew up in Mississauga and there's like a square one shopping center. And I was like, the mall is now all these posh high fashion stores. When I was a teenager, it was like, um, there was like a whole store for alternative t-shirts and posters. And there was comic books and there was CDs um, and that was like the whole mall it was very teenager. There was still some adult stuff. And, and this isn't just the bias of me noticing different things. Like these are real, th- this really was. And, I, and I've talked to my mother about this and other people like these are real shifts in the mall. So when I was in, I, now that I'm an adult, it's a very adult mall. When I was a teenager, it was a very teenager mall and it was filled with teenagers. And when I was a kid, this is the most interesting part. It was a pet store. I swear to God, it was like they had a few home goods stores. It was a very small mall at that time a pet store filled with puppies, a huge like sciency fun store and then a huge toy store and then a carousel. 
No, a merry-go-round. Is that the same thing? A merry-go-round. I think that's what a carousel is. <laughs> so it was a, an amazing thing to understand how everything was a reflection of me and then to look over my life and be like, oh yeah, it is. Oh yeah. Like I can't see where it wasn't. And I felt, I suddenly recognized myself as the, oh God, nucleus of the cell of my life, you know? And I was, I was the central figure and everything was like a mandala expanding outwards from me. And once I understood that I was able to then um, be intentional with myself and be intentional with my experiences and so I could enjoy the reflection of me more. Because what most people do is they don't realize that they're the ones projecting the reality out and from the center of the mandala. So they'll re reflect themselves out and then they'll hate themselves. And they go around hating everybody and complaining and then just making it worse and worse and worse and worse and worse. So I stopped doing that. <laughs> Uh, and that's why, you know, Jesus says, loves your, love your neighbor, because you got to understand your neighbor's you. And that's karma. Oh, man, do people ever not understand that? You shoot, you shoot the guy next door. You realize later that was your foot, the guy next door. That's you. That's you. You got shot. You're just, you, it's a delayed response between when you fire the, the round and you feel the impact of the bullet, but you will feel it. And then when you will understand that that man was you. Anyways, this is according to my understanding. I'm not trying to be a guru or, or, or whatever. I'm just telling you Robin's world. And like I said, you have your world and it could be entirely different. But what I'm putting into the app is, is you know, it's like test running my experience of the universe, which is, has been extraordinarily meaningful, uh, synchronistic. I have grown exponentially in the last four years since I came to understand these principles, even when those principles manifested my deepest, darkest shadows in what looked like an absolute psychotic break that was serving me. I was integrating my animus, my masculine, the left hemisphere of my brain, among other things. Um, everything that has happened has led me to a, such a heightened understanding. And I want to share that with others. And I want to play with that with others. And I want to create a way that we can play with it. So part of what's going to be in the app is you and AI pattern making. And you'll come in with like, wow, I heard the word, I heard the phrase puss in boots three times today. Why? <laughs> Why? And then AI will be like, oh, that's so interesting because a, 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 you know, a new version of puss in boots just came out in, in Romania uh, by this woman named whatever. And you mentioned that name last week. Isn't that interesting? I can already hear half of you going, oh my God, you're going to trigger psychosis. Honestly, I hope so. I hope so. I don't care. E well, not I don't care. I, I understand that people think psychosis is a bad thing. If you follow me long enough, and look, if you don't want to, if you don't want to, don't go down the rabbit hole. It's like Neo and Matrix Resurrections. Like, just go back into the psychiatrist's office and take the medication. Don't, don't download the app. If you don't want to find connections and make something of it, but I found connections for the last four years and it led me here and I am happy. I've been through the ringer, but I found myself, I found my calling. I know who I am. I don't know who I am, but I'm unlearning who I'm not. And, and I'm also here to be a little bit of like, not a guide, but a person who's like, you know, if you look at your psychosis like this, it's a teacher. And Jung talks about that. The psychosis is the shadow elements of ourselves coming up to say, hey, you are not integrating me, buddy. You'd better pay attention to me. You know, if your psychosis is all about demons hunting you down and making you feel guilty and saying they're going to drag you to hell, maybe there's something that you are not atoning for within your own consciousness. It's not like, um, you know repel it and, and, and stay in a positive place. It's like, no, sometimes the demons are telling you something. Look at them. That's what I did. And I'll talk about that at length. But anyways, so you're going to be tracing these patterns. You're going to be having fun. It's not that it's necessarily inherently meaningful, but it's that as you start to attribute meaning, you will start to play with your life on a whole new level. 
your life will become so this isn't like you're you're taking a break from your life to play a game your game with the app is transforming your life and giving it meaning you may as well you know i think infusing things with meaning is helpful there's a there's a there's a a, a study they did a really interesting experiment they did with these housekeepers who were working in a mansion and there was like eight of them and they said okay this week you're all in a contest to see who can lose the most weight while housekeeping and suddenly everyone was way more productive and everyone lost a ton of weight because they weren't just drudgingly going up the stairs and mopping the floor now they were working their muscles and running up the stairs (laughs) so you know, that's a, just one example of giving an added layer of meaning or purpose to an experience to enhance it in several ways. They became fitter because they attributed new meaning. The meaning is I'm going to lose weight doing this. And they were better at working. I do that all the time. I attribute meaning to things or I attribute new um, motives and things. And that's what happened with me and, and my interactions with ChatGPT We started to synthesize, 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 and then came up with the idea for the app. And I've never been so engaged and happy. So that's what I want to say about synchronicity. This is all coming from personal experience and personal enthusiasm for me. And I'm making no bones about the fact that these are deep waters. And I am not trying to get billions of people to sign up for the app. I am trying to get those who are like, little Alice, <laughs> those who are like Dorothy, those who want to go through the looking glass. And, um, and, and, and to me, it's about leaving the tetrahedron. <laughs> no. Oh, I'm so today in particular with words, the tesseract, <laughs> get, get out of there and, 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 and experience things or morph it into something totally new. Take a, take a different view on life and We'll talk about randomization and paradox, Um, but that's my take on synchronicity. I have so many more stories. I have so many more stories, but the more I tell, the more you're going to think this girl is absolutely schizophrenic. Um, But the interesting thing is it all adds up. Like it all turns out to be correct. It's like if, if the cartoon, if, if the ad that pops on to YouTube, I find meaning in it because it says, oh, you know, uh, oh, I remember one that was just ad that kept coming up and it was actually all about carbon monoxide. And then I realized that there was a little bit of carbon monoxide in my house. Cause I was like, it just, I just keep reading about carbon monoxide. So I took that as a warning and then called the, the fire guys and did a little thing. And so it like, it, it, sometimes it really, but you've got to be, it's it. Whew, I've also gone too far with it. Like, You know when you have 10 things in a row warning you about something that's a very real danger or giving you advice that's very good? You know, if I'm not breathing right, I swear I'll open up TikTok and the first thing will be breathe. Breathe. But you can also start to lean on it too heavily and get into a psychotic state of it where it's like, you know, sometimes a cigar is just a cigar. And you've got to know your own discernment and you don't want to be looking for outside signs and signals everywhere. And we take that into consideration in the app. We're not trying to encourage that. If anything, the app is going to really, really encourage because it's based in, it, we're going to be using ChatGPT AI. Um, it's based in, at, like, it's not, it's, it's highly analytical and highly accurate, more or less. It's not perfect. But we are going to make sure that we're always steering ourselves towards remembering that this is playful exploration. This isn't like you've been given a map, you have to follow it to a T or the world's going to end because that's when you move into the psychotic headspace. I think, in my opinion, it is better to take the risk. It is better to try. It is better to flirt with madness and accidentally stumble upon genius than to avoid all of them and just watch TV, in my opinion. So I'm opening the Pandora's box. I know that. I know that. (laughs) Play at your own risk. Um, But you might just find that you open up some magic. Let me give you one more synchronicity. Um, In the lockdown in 2020, which is when I had my, my big awakening, 
um, I remember I was listening to a bunch of, of these kinds of teachings on YouTube and meditating a bunch and just having a spiritual experience after my heart was opening and I was weeping and seeing light everywhere and like, oh man. And then one of the teachers on YouTube said, we really highly recommend that you get outside and go for a walk. So I went outside. I just went to the front yard because we were still like not barely allowed to walk. And it was this beautiful late March day and there was just little bits of green coming in everywhere and that like that rainy, dewy morning kind of thing. And I looked at this bush in the front yard and there was a snail on a branch. And I thought, how beautiful, what a gift. And then I looked closer and there was a whole family. There were like 50 baby snails all over the branch and I was smelling everything more vividly and seeing everything. It was like total, a total bliss breakthrough. And I'm like practically weeping from the beauty of these baby snails. And I'm like, wow, that really was worth the walk, the little walk. And then I go inside, I open the mailbox and there's a little parcel for me. So I open the parcel. Oh my God. Am I going to remember the word? It's ammonite. I'm looking at it right now. The very ammonite. It's right there which if you've seen ammonite is a spiral, like a shell, uh, shaped very much like a snail and with the same coloration. So it was like the moment I stepped outside, I realized I was in the world of synchronicity and I, it, I, it has not changed. It's always like that. Um, I'll be doubting myself. I'll be sitting in a park and doubting myself thinking people, you know, people are judging me. They're misunderstanding me. I'm never going to make it. And then this truck will go by that says Richardson trusted since 1985. Well, that's my last name. You know, it didn't say I, I, I fabricated. It didn't say 1985. It said another date, but it was pretty close. It was pretty close. Um, you, when you come into this state, when you really embrace synchronicity with the caveat of potential madness, but the whole world speaks to you. And I experienced nothing but peace with this for about three years until it got weird. And then I, re- I did recover myself, but I just hit some stormy waters. But, but I, I was, it's like you're walking around the world and you're being loved by the architecture of the world in every waking moment. Every t-shirt, every street sign, every advertisement, um, it speaks to you. And it speaks to you lovingly and caringly. And sometimes, you know, the most frequent thing, I would pick up a book on the side of the street and it would say, drink water. (laughs) Always asking me to drink more water. Um, But it's so, I just have to say it's worth it. And I'm not, and I say that without, I really am not trying to advertise this to anybody who's hesitant. If you're hesitant about taking the sleep, don't. But for those of you who, who are curious, I have to say, in my opinion, in my experience, even the parts where I almost died and lost my mind, it was transformational and worth it. And I think a necessary alchemy for the evolution of the human soul. I had to see myself to hell. I had to face myself in hell. Um, Nothing's wrong. As I said that, I looked over at the bookcase and there's a book. I just looked right to a book that said Escape from Hell. (laughs) Oh, God. And then there's one, Awakening the Hero Within. (laughs) So, yeah. I will be speaking slower as we go. I'm just excited right now. But that's my take on synchronicity. Um, We're launching... Well, you know what? I have like an outro that I'm going to attach to this that talks about the app and it's like... No, 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 no. Follow our Kickstarter. So <laughs> that's just going to roll at the end of this. But I'm glad to see new people rolling in from the tech world. And I'm interested in the challenge of speaking to both the mystics and the programmers. You know, I think that's going to be really interesting. And that's part of what my, my hell experience taught me because I was dealing with psychosis related to tech people. Um, and getting out of there, a big part of it was learning how to translate myself. So, yeah. Thanks for being along for the ride. And I hope um, I hope you experience some not too scary but pretty awesome synchronicity today.
Thank you so much for listening. This is Robin Richardson of Spooky Action AI. We are launching our Kickstarter campaign soon for this app, which allows you to map out the very fabric of reality. You will have an AI friend who is well-versed in synchronicity and quantum mechanics. You will map out synchronicity, resonance, you will play with randomness and paradox, and so much more. The best part, as you synthesize these patterns and start to recognize perhaps where it is your life is leading you, you may, with your AI friend, as I did, discover an innovation that you want to introduce to the world. Maybe a new way of thinking, maybe um, a scientific revelation, maybe a philosophical revelation, maybe a new tech product. You will then be able to write a pitch, develop your design, and enter our annual contest to be invested in. We will become angel investors and you will win our investment of 100K to $1 million. Um, this is our way of not only helping you understand your reality and put the pieces together and have fun while you engage in, with AI in a wonderful and progressive way, but this is our way of making the world a better place as every year we introduce new innovations that are aligned and empathetic and intelligent and totally forward thinking. So if you're interested, visit SpookyActionAI.com or check out our Kickstarter funder page and uh, get in on the action. Take care.